James Milan, and this is Talk of the Town. Um, as everything else that's happening right now um, in the coronavirus period, uh, Talk of the Town has gone remote, and we are happy to welcome to our virtual studio today, um, Christine Shaw, who is the Executive Director of the Council on Aging. Um, we've done lots and lots of work uh, with Council on Aging in the past, and um, one of the things we hope to do with Christine is get her back in, get her into the studio at ACMI and get going again with the regular programming that we have. For now, uh, we're going to settle for this chat. And uh, Christine, obviously you've been working, I know, at the Council on Aging for a while, but in a sense, we're doing what we like to do on Talk of the Town, and that is introduce you to Arlington and Arlington to you uh, in that you have been the executive director for not a, a whole long time just yet. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, I've worked with the Council on Aging for a couple years now. Mostly I was focused on our volunteer projects and managing the over 200 volunteers from Arlington that help out the Council on Aging in a variety of ways. Um, and I also manage the transportation program um, everything from our relationships with our cab companies to our volunteer drivers to our senior vans that you probably see around town. Um, and then beginning of 2020, I was made the acting director um, and then very recently um, the executive director. So, Well, congratulations on that, uh, I think. Yes, <laughs> you know, I hope. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it is it is a it, it is a wonderful distinction, and um, we're we're really uh, on behalf of the community very happy to welcome you into that uh, that that position officially. But also, oh my God, what a time uh, to be starting! So let's talk. Let's we're going to talk about all different kinds of aspects of what's going on. But but for right now. Let's start with um, just the kinds of things that the Council on Aging, because it's a very special institution here in town, is doing um, that is specifically in response to or in light of COVID-19 and this new world that we're all living in. So take your pick. Tell us, tell us a few of the highlights of the things that are going on. Wonderful, yes. Um, like every other organization right now, we really have refocused, reprioritized. Um, we're focused on really what's important right now, what we're deeming most important. So I'll talk about a couple of those programs that are big priorities for our team at the Council on Aging. Um, one, it has to do with food access for people in Arlington. So many people in Arlington get their food different ways and we have some great organizations in town like Arlington Eats, Food Link, local restaurants, all of the grocery stores and now as we all know um, the safety regulations around getting your food have changed so um, in a couple weeks we've put together um, and started really streamlining with all of those organizations I just mentioned a central food access program um, so anybody in Arlington that's in need of food um, for in any age, usually the Council on Aging, we're talking about um, our older residents, but any age um, can call our food hotline number um, and they can leave a message with their contact information and someone will call them back. And we coordinate with Arlington Eats and Food Link um, on a really safe, um, grocery packing and contact free delivery for anybody who needs it. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what just just out of not out of curiosity because it was because people will want to know mm -hmm. what is the number that okay people sure call? so the food hotline number is seven eight one three one six three four zero zero. Um, you'll recognize that as the Council on Aging mainline phone number, but it is also the food hotline phone number too. Okay. Um, yes, and it is um, volunteers from Arlington Eats and Food Link that are packing the bags and then the MRC volunteers, which are actually Medical Reserve Corps volunteers, have been activated to distribute the bags um, and of the groceries around Arlington in a safe way. They've all been trained. Um, they're all highly qualified people that have signed up to volunteer and as far as I'm aware, this is the first time in a while that we've had to mobilize them, but they're doing a great job too. 
Yes, actually, I, I am very familiar with this because my wife is one of those volunteers. Yeah, that's um, right. She and um, she's been at it for a number of hours each week and happy to do so. I also uh, did food link uh, delivery for from from the very beginning um, and for a number of years. And so I do understand something about the process. But um, as you have pointed out, people are very concerned about where, you know, how many hands have been on anything um, mm -hmm. that is come that come that we come into contact with these days. So. Um, good to, to for people to yes be reassured that the that everybody who's in charge is very un, understands this very well and uh, that they've put all of the proper precautions into place um, and it does seem like the program is you know both learning as it's moving along mm -hmm. um, and quite effective uh, in 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 um, in providing the service already. Absolutely. I know um, last week alone, there were about 250 residents that received deliveries. Um, this week, there were more, um, closer to 300, and we're anticipating it growing as the need increases, we're assuming here in Arlington. So we're planning on um, continuing with this method, which is a method that will work, um, hopefully, for the foreseeable future um, to get people food that they need. So that's been a a great program and a wonderful partnership with a bunch of our um, Arlington organizations that were kind of running fairly independently and now we're all working together so really proud yeah, that of is it's it, uh, obviously these are these are the kinds of measures that these times call for mm -hmm. and great that you and the other leaders of these organizations have recognized that and are are figuring out how to do these things together yes absolutely it's great um, another focus um, that has been um, a, a pretty big project for us was distributing um, hand-sewn um, cotton masks to Arlington residents. Um, and we decided that our first priority was to get these masks to the residents of the five um, senior housing buildings in Arlington. In total, that's about 750 um, residents of Arlington. Um, it took a couple weeks, but we had some amazing volunteers. Most of them um, were through Laura's sewing school. She was a big part of it. Um, but we had volunteers all over Arlington sewing masks, and um, we had staff. Yeah, I mean, if you got, if you yeah. guys managed to to conjure up 750 masks in a couple of weeks, you had a bunch of people doing it. Yeah, it was it was really inspiring. Um, and then we had two staff members um, that went out door to door very carefully wearing masks themselves and distributed um, masks and information on how to properly take care of them and wear them. Um, because the folks in those buildings really do need to be wearing them even when they're checking their mail, going to do their laundry or leaving their unit for any reason. So mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that they had it. Um, first, and I'm happy to say, I think it was as of yesterday, we finished up that distribution. Um, so you were saying that that's, that was kind of the first, uh, the first area that you decided uh, to prioritize in terms of um, producing these masks and distributing them. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that, that this is a, an ongoing project and you'll be moving on to other, um, you know, to providing masks for other Arlington residents? Absolutely. Um, now we're working on trying to collect about 250 that we're going to distribute through the grocery um, food program that I mentioned earlier, um, because that's a that'll be a great population of people to make sure they get masks as well. And we already have the avenue of getting um, them distributed, distributed, which is um, very helpful. Um, and then we've been taking down um, information from other people that need masks. We think um, the next focus will probably be folks that live in densely populated apartment buildings in town. Um, and then we'll just take it from there. And as long as we keep getting the masks in, we'll try to distribute them as fast and as accurately as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I, just as an aside, uh, before we continue um, with you know, probably even more um, programs that you guys are rolling out for the benefit of the community. Um, I did want to say that there, there are a number of people who, um, and you may be well be one of them, as, as are the people you work with, who find themselves busier as opposed to less busy 
uh, than they've been before, you know, just in dealing with the current needs and trying to both identify, recognize, and then serve um, those needs. Uh, I'm wondering if that is your sense. 100% true for the Council on Aging and Health and Human Services staff, I can tell you that. <laughs> um, basically for the past couple of weeks, we've been working, you know, more hours, but this is the work we like to do. These are the people we know really well. We've known them for years. Um, we care about them and miss them a lot. We saw them all the time at the senior center. Um, and we want to make sure that everybody is being, um, you know, touched base with and has what they need during this crisis that I don't think any of us saw coming, you know, we were living normal lives. People were coming to the senior center just less than a month ago, which is hard to believe. Yeah, the amount, uh, it is very, very difficult to get one's mind around the amount of time it, it hasn't taken to, to have such incredible transformation in the way that we are all living. Um, I agree. And the work, of course, that you're doing. But speaking of reaching out uh, in different ways, uh, um, I know that you also have a telephone reassurance program. Uh, yes. That's up. Tell us what, the, what that's about. Great. Um, we have two very, very um, special social workers that work for the Council on Aging. Many of you probably know Lori and Marcy. Um, and what we worked on from the beginning of all of this with them is putting together lists of people that are isolated and don't have family members necessarily calling to help them or checking in on them. Um, there's a large percentage of people that count on us as their um, primary um, people that, that check in on them. Um, so we put together um, lists of, of those folks that mostly our social, work, social workers know and our nurse works with. Um, and then we paired up some of our vetted and trusted COA volunteers um, with, with people on that list. Mm -hmm. And they're regularly, at least once a week, reaching out to them, talking to them, listening to what, what, what's on their mind, answering some of their questions. Um, a lot of the volunteers participating in this, in this project have social work backgrounds too. So they're there to help people through the mental health um, piece of all of this, which is very important, as we all know. Um, and so that telephone call reassurance plan um, program is is brand new, but it's working really well. Um, if people, if anybody knows of someone that they think could benefit from it, they are welcome to call, call the Council on Aging and we'll um, get them signed up for the program. And are those um, telephone calls um, or are you using Zoom or Skype or something else to make visual contact with, the, with those residents? Um, if those, most of these residents don't have access to technology, um, that is, you know, a pretty high percentage of the people we work with um, truly don't have smartphones, computers, or internet. So um, old-fashioned landline, landline calls are, are the way that we reach them, and this is a program that can reach those too. We do um, have a lot of programs that we are getting up and running um, on Zoom group meetings, and it's great for the people that have the access to participate in those. Mm -hmm. um, but this telephone reassurance program is mostly people that otherwise don't have access to um, the communities that can be formed virtually on, on the internet or mm -hmm. using computers. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. And you mentioned um, Lori and Marcy, the social workers there. We also know that you have oh, um, always had a, uh, a full-time or, or a nurse uh, who is also on staff. And we're curious, how are they, all three of them, um, managing to get their work done and serve, again, the, that population that is so uh, in need of what they offer, um, but there's gotta be complications uh, yeah. to, to doing so. Definitely. Um, you know, they're all working remotely, including our nurse. Um, we're calling people back the same day to help address their concerns. Um, our, our social workers and nurses help people with things like, you know, applying for SNAP for food stamps. Um, that program can be done just by calling our office. You don't have to do anything in person. That's a really good thing for people to know that we're a official SNAP 
site our our office for any age um, so if people find themselves wanting to apply for that program they just need to give us a call um, but the so they're also helping people apply for housing if they need it helping people through financial crisis our nurse is answering um, medical questions for the people that she's worked with in the past and referring people to their primary care um, but they are still managing a full schedule of um, unrelated to COVID um, mm -hmm. crises that come up in people's lives. Um, so those things are still going on in this world and they're managing, you know, very well and we're working really closely together with the Arlington Housing Authority and Minuteman Senior Services because all of us are working with the same um, vulnerable population and we're keeping each other really in the loop if there's concerns or people that we're concerned about um, to kind of make sure that we've touched base with them in some way. Yeah, it's great that you remind us um, that there are, there are so many non-virus, non-coronavirus related issues that people have to deal with that are very serious issues that come up, you know, uh, not only on weekdays, but on weekends and, you know, at any particular point. So um, are you guys actually operating in a way that where where the things that you're we've been talking about are also true on Saturdays and Sundays in addition to Monday to Friday? Yes, yes. Even though our office is technically closed to the public and you can't walk in, um, we're checking voicemails and emails, you know, really seven days a week at this point and getting people um, the answers that they need mm -hmm. as quickly as we possibly can. So the staff is certainly working um, more than the typical business hours getting this stuff done as they typically have in the past as well. Mm -hmm. How are you, you were just mentioning working with Minuteman and, and um, just, just wondering how, how much cooperation collaboration is going on between the various uh, services in town that do, um, that do focus on the, those vulnerable populations you were mentioning. Um, how how's that been going? You know, trying to figure out how you can collaborate and and uh, you know make sure that the that the, the the total exceeds the sum of your parts, if possible. Yep, absolutely. Um, it's a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of conference calls. Um, we have a weekly food resource team that meets virtually. Um, with a lot of these partners. Um, we, I just had a call with Minuteman this morning. That's a weekly call. Mm -hmm. We also have um, calls with our Council on Aging partners across the state, other towns, um, MCOA that oversees it for Massachusetts. Um, so really kind of bouncing ideas off of each other, discussing challenges, seeing what's working well for each other. And um, the collaboration is, is wonderful, I have to say. It's better than I've ever seen it before because in order to get to everybody that needs help right now, we really have to work together. And um, I, it's, it's great. We're working with them like we're really one team, I would say. And, you know, I, 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 I'm curious. And again, I, I want to say right off that if you don't have an answer for this, that makes a lot of sense to me. But I'm wondering, um, as you as you work so successfully and so fulfillingly um, with your partner organizations here, I'm wondering whether you can, whether you guys are already thinking about or whether you can conceive of how on the other side of this, whatever that is, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, it might change the way that you guys do things and do things together and the, and how often you communicate and in what way and et cetera. I absolutely think that um, whenever this is technically over, um, things will be probably different in a lot of ways. And this might be a way that it could be different for the better um, because we do have all of this experience now working with each other, seeing what our strengths are. Um, some organizations have great pools of volunteers that we've never worked with at the Council on Aging and are now working with us as a as a whole. Mm -hmm. So um, between, you know, sharing ideas, working through kinks of kind of merging our systems and how we're keeping track of our information and how often we're talking, I think 
it definitely will probably change the way things are run in the future. Hopefully, you know, keeping things more streamlined for Arlington, making it easier for residents to kind of know who to call when they have um, different questions and that we all will be able to point them in the right direction after working together so closely through this. Yeah. Program. I think we're all always interested in silver linings, right? For right. everything that's happening here. And this does seem like, uh, you know, it has a real shot at, at having a much longer and deeper and more helpful footprint um, on all of our lives than, uh, you know, than hopefully the virus itself. I agree. Um, but uh, a couple of more questions about different constituencies in town. Um, one is, I'm wondering, um, how does the Council on Aging and the services that you provide, how does that work for those who are in one of the um, senior housing developments here, you know, um, the Sunshine, um, Sunrise, I mean, or um, Bright Horizons, something, places mm -hmm. like that. Are those, are, are people living there uh, just, they can access COA services just as much or just as easily as people living in their own homes or how does that work? Absolutely, um, both before and during this you know, crisis, we've worked with people um, at all of those addresses, Brightview, Sunrise, um, Park Ave Nursing Home, um, any of those communities that are private, um, you know, they're still Arlington residents and when our transportation was up and running, we frequently went and um, picked up people and dropped off people at those locations. Um, our social workers work closely with some of those people. Um, and yes, they are welcome and do frequently reach out to us for all of our programs and services. Mm -hmm. And we keep in touch the best we can with the management in those buildings to make sure they have what they need and um, that they can take advantage of all the programs the town is offering as well. Man, you just give only good answers, you know, okay. <laughs> only, only positive, only, uh, you know, con constructive and reassuring. Um, oh, so good. thank you. Appreciate that. Um, let's keep going. Uh, uh, see, see if I can stump you at some point. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to ask you about a different, another constituency and one that I have to say is particularly personally meaningful for me because I'll just take a moment and let you know that we are very grateful in my house for the fact that we happened to bring um, my mother, who's been living on her own in Western Canada for 43 years, uh, here to live with us just in January. So um, needless to say, uh, we are grateful each and every day that we are all together um, and that she is here with us as opposed to in some other situation where we'd be a lot more worried. Yeah. Um, however, we have also found, like countless other people, um, that there's a lot of work involved in caring for, in our case, an 84-year-old with memory issues. And um, so the constituency I'm going to ask about is our counselors and the social workers at COA, et cetera, are they available to folks like myself, um, non -sen well, I guess I am a senior, but not in the way that I'm thinking about. Uh, family members who do have seniors in our own homes. Absolutely. And Lori August um, was just saying this morning that she has gotten a lot more calls from adult children that have taken in their parents or other family members um, asking, you know, how, how to cope long term and what resources are available to them. Um, we've had calls this week from people that are being discharged from rehab nursing homes um, after a surgery that took place sometime this winter or after some sort of, you know, joint replacement. And those people are still coming home um, to families that need to take care of them too. So um, the same, I would say the same answer would be for people that have any questions about caring for um, older residents and whatever condition that it is, we probably have someone we can connect you with. I know um, part of the challenges right now is that a lot of the organizations um, that typically have provided home care and physically gone into people's houses to care for people, um, it's challenging because they can't always do that anymore with the new restrictions. So there's a lot more pressure on families um, and 
you know, relations to these people that need to go in and do some of the things that they've never had to do before. And we're happy to make sure that they have some questions answered before they need to start doing that. Or if they're scared about doing it, try to help walk them through it and put them in touch with people that can help them as much as possible. Right. Um, another, another aspect of this um, that I was curious about, I know that you have over a long period of time, you've had a, a medical equipment loan program where, you know, people could get stuff for the amount of time that they needed it into their homes to care for uh, older uh, residents there. Um, are you, is that, is that able to continue at the, you know, in the current conditions? What's the story with that program? Um, as of last week, we did still get a couple requests from people um, that were looking to borrow medical equipment, um, mostly in the situations where someone was coming home from rehab or someone had just had a surgery that was before COVID-19 took place um, and they needed medical equipment. And we have either helped them by um, working with whoever has been in the office to um, get the equipment we have cleaned and available for them to pick up in a contract free way. Mm -hmm. um, it's much more challenging to do that, but um, Lori yeah. makes that call. Um, if it is a, you know, someone in need and we can help them, we're still trying to do it as much as possible. But as you can imagine right now, we're not accepting donations of the equipment simply because um, it's tough to receive them and clean them pr properly and store them. So, but if people are in um, desperate need for medical equipment, we can hopefully help them or point them in the right direction for some, some place that could. You know, I mentioned earlier that I was very impressed by just all the breadth uh, uh, of what it is that you guys are doing, how busy you personally must be and many others uh, in the organization. Um, all this takes money. And I think that um, COA must receive some part of its funding, perhaps the largest part um, from the town. I'm wondering, um, ha has the town in allocated more money um, given the just tremendous amount of work that you guys are doing, not only in the areas that you're used to doing that in, but also expanding into these other areas? Yeah, um, the Council on Aging gets really our budget, like you said, from the town. Um, also from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, um, through CDBG state funding, and then through private, um, some donations from um, people in the community as well. So we have um, basically, they've made it clear to us that they want us to be able to help as many people as possible. So if there's something um, that we need, to make it clear. And there's also been some generous people in Arlington that have offered to help fund any um, need for projects that need to happen. Um, so far, I haven't, I felt like if there's something that we need that we don't have funding for, we'll be able to find a way to get it, which is a great feeling. Yeah, that's, it's nice not to have to worry about that as well as everything right. else. At least right now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one other thing I think that people often associate with the Council on Aging and have found so useful over, over time, and I'm wondering if you're able to continue doing it in the current circumstances, is the publishing of your news of a newsletter mm -hmm. um, or just kind of regular information that is emitted from the Council on Aging about different programs that are going on, um, different services that are available, et cetera. Are you m managing to continue to, to put that out and how, how, how is that happening? Yeah, um, our newsletter is the primary way people find out about um, the programs and services we've provided. Um, we did have a March newsletter that went out right before everything started to take a turn. Um, we did not do an April newsletter um, and instead have been communicating through the town um, press releases, websites, and and really kind of figuring out what we could and could not still provide. Mm -hmm. um, we are still planning on doing a May newsletter um, and we'll be, it'll probably be kind of an update on all of the things I'm talking to you about, but <clears throat> also what is still going on and how people can get the services they need. Um, in the meantime, we've been 
doing a lot of our communication through flyer distribution at the um, housing authority properties when we're delivering the masks. Um, we're also in the grocery bags that we're delivering, making sure we're putting, you know, important information, printed information um, in there to communicate with people too. Yeah. One of the things that, uh, that I know folks have often mentioned to me and that I've even started to pay attention to myself, of course, with uh, the change, as I was saying before, in our own household, um, is the number of activities that were offered through the Council on Aging for, for seniors. Mm -hmm. I understand that you guys are either about to roll out or have, have plans to um, some kinds of classes that people can still access how yes. how's that gonna work <clears throat> yeah that's just just getting started um, some of our support groups have had some virtual zoom meetings which has been great um, but as far as our activities um, fitness classes are a pretty um, big part of what we were doing at the senior center so um, starting the week of April 20th um, our Monday, Wednesday exercise classes will be run by those instructors on Zoom. And we're actually in the process of communicating that to all the class attendees or anybody that wants to participate, mm -hmm. um, that that will start happening. And then we have our Tai Chi instructor and our chair yoga instructor that are pre-recording um, themselves teaching classes. And ACMI has offered to show those um, and which is kind of nice to know that the people that don't necessarily have internet access but have television and cable will be able to see some familiar class instructors um, and participate in those classes if, mm -hmm. if they would like. And that the as those come, you know, as you guys get that down, um, and establish a, a, a schedule or reestablish your schedule. Um, is should people be coming to your website for for in, for that information? Is that the easiest way? That um, is the easiest way. Yes. Yeah. Um, we'll be keeping that all on our website, um, also our Facebook page, and really the Health and Human Service um, Facebook page as well. Frequently um, is more is very up to date with the Council on Aging updates mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I guess, you know, I, I, I want to just, just remind people that we should all be cognizant of the fact that all the, all your efforts, um, uh, you know, as, as diligently and kind of assiduously pursued as they are, um, you know, it's still going to be hard for, for some folks who, like you said, are just technically are, are disconnected or technologically disconnected. Um, to be able to access those services. So I know you're working on behalf of those folks in any number of other ways, but um, you know, let's all spare a thought for the fact that you know, people like my mom are gonna be lucky in that way because we'll set her up and she'll be able to enjoy those classes. Um, and let's hope that that happens for as many people as possible. Um, but also just stay mindful that, you know, good thing you guys are making those phone calls to people's landlines, et cetera, because there are a lot of people who are marooned, um, as, as we, as we know. Yes, absolutely. And those are the people that, you know, keep us up at night that we're trying to make sure we reach out to. So if mm -hmm. people know of a neighbor or somebody that they're wondering if people have reached out to during all this, please give us a call. Mm -hmm. Um, so as if there were, <laughs> as if all we've been talking about has not been enough to be on your plate. You also um, arrive as the newly minted executive director in the midst of uh, a bunch of renovations yes. um, happening to you, the physical space in which the Council on Aging and Senior Center, et cetera, operate. Um, what's the word with those? Uh, have, have, has that all had to be postponed or what, what's going on? So it's funny because that was my biggest challenge when I started, right? We had about one- that was the thing, right? Right. <laughs> we had um, one week of classes that um, were happening offsite. A huge part of our December and January and February were reassigning where activities were happening outside of 27 Maple Street. So we, we got that under our belts for about two weeks before we had to shut everything down physically. Um, and right now we're really just focused on the programs I told you, um, I shared with you today. 
Um, I haven't heard an official update on the construction. Um, I know that they're trying their hardest to figure those timelines out um, and and I'm, I'm sure it will happen. I, I don't have a set date for when it will start. Um, I'm sure people will be, you know, looking to know that since we were really weeks away from beginning. But as soon as we have that information to share, we'll definitely share it. As, as I said, <laughs> there's, there's maybe this portion of your plate available for any of that, or maybe none. Yeah. Uh, so that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, so my last question for you, and then of course I will invite you to, sh to share anything else that we haven't covered. But my last question for you is, I'm sure that there are a bunch of people out here and, and, and maybe listening who would like, especially after hearing about all the things you guys are doing, would like to help in some way. Um, how can folks help you do the things that you're doing? Well, even before um, COVID-19 started, we had, like I said, over 200 volunteers. So we are an organization that runs because of volunteers. We have a small staff, um, but hundreds of volunteers that help us get the work done. So I would say, um, you know, in the meantime, if you're interested in volunteering specifically for COVID related assistance, you know, give us a call, let us know. Um, if you're interested in um, some of our programs or Council on Aging volunteer opportunities, under normal circumstances, we would love to have that happen too. And I would say, reach out to us and we'll absolutely utilize your help. Um, when we can. And I would say if you're interested in um, volunteering um, during this time, it is a great idea to reach out to the Medical Reserve Corps. Um, the region is headquartered in Arlington. Um, they have a website, the Medical Reserve Corps, I believe they're Region 4, and they are accepting new volunteers and have the ability to run the Corey checks and everything during this time. Um, so they're a great group that we are working with to um, to make sure we have great volunteers right now. Is, is there a website for that? Um, there is, there is, and I don't know it off the top of my head. I want to say it's something region 4B, it's a trick. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we will, we will um, get that information from you and show it on our screen. As people will see that uh, uh, by the time they're watching this part of the interview. So Great, I appreciate uh, it, thank that, you. That's great. Um, so lastly, you know, we've taken up a lot of your time. We really appreciate oh. taking the time. Um, is there anything that you would like to share uh, with our audience that we haven't discussed or covered? No, I just want to really thank you and ACMI for having me on today. And um, I just want to make sure the, you know, people of Arlington of any age, but especially those over age 60 that we typically deal with that, you know, we're really, really, you know, we're worried about you. We miss you. Um, we want to hear from you. Um, and just please try to stay in touch with us. If you're in need of something, reach out. Um, these are times you may have never experienced before. And it could be the first time that you do need a grocery delivery or that it would be handy to have um, some help that you haven't needed in the past. So please don't worry at all and reach out to us at the Council on Aging if you need anything during this time. Um, you know, uh, Susan Karp was a good friend of ACMI's, a longtime uh, executive director of the Council on Aging, and um, we always enjoyed talking with her and speaking and uh, working with her, I should say. Um, I am delighted um, to, to meet you um, today and to anticipate us working together fruitfully in the future. The Council on Aging is clearly in excellent hands and doing the same great work it always has. Thank you. Thank oh, you very thank much you. for that, for your efforts, for your vision, um, for your collaboration with the other great organizations in town um, through this crisis and beyond, I'm sure. So we will speak to you again and hopefully soon. And we wish you the best of luck uh, with the work that you're doing. And uh, one, one, one more thank you on behalf of the community. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. For Christine Shaw, um, the Executive Director of the Council on Aging here in Arlington, and for Talk of the Town, I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.